Good morning, God Minute. Warm blessings upon you. Today, it's a special day because it is the feast of Saint Louise de Marillac, the co-founder, along with Saint Vincent de Paul, of the Daughters of Charity, two of whom we have on our team here at the God Minute, as you know, Sister Kara and Sister Carol. And if you don't know, St. Vincent de Paul and St. Louise de Marillac, they were contemporaries back in the 17th century and very dear friends for the better part of really 35 years. Their love and admiration for one another was such an essential dimension of their own success and amazing work in improving the lives of all those who suffered from poverty or rejection. Both founded religious communities. St. Vincent founded us, the Vincentian Priests and Brothers, and St. Louis, along with St. Vincent, founded the Daughters of Charity. They were, I, I think, what you would call today soulmates. And they died only six months apart in 1660. It's quite amazing. So it is with her, St. Louise, that we have in mind in our hearts today as we begin our prayer this beautiful day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open my lips. And my my mouth shall declare your praise. Psalm 62 Waiting for God. I wait quietly for God's touch in my heart, and that is my strength and my salvation. Remembering that touch, I am free. The day's events do not shake me. I am often besieged from within and without by forces that would topple me. I wait quietly for God's touch in my heart. In that touch, I know my strength and my salvation. Doubts, difficulties, enemies, depressions, my own double-mindedness. When God speaks in our hearts, that is what gives life its shine. It opens to us love and helps us to be loving. Therefore, I wait quietly for God's touch in my heart. Put your trust in God, pour out your heart, and find refuge. For people, leaders, nations are all temporal. Idolizing wealth is foolish. Our education and good deeds take us only so far. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. So for our reflection today, something just a little bit different. Being the Feast of St. Louis, I asked Sister Carol Schumer on our team who has been a daughter of charity for 57 years. Wow, that's longer than I've been alive. (laughs) Okay, that's a lie. But anyway, I asked uh, Sister Carol, what continues to inspire you about St. Louis today? Of all the beautiful saints in our communion in the church, what's one thing about St. Louis? that drew you to her. So I invite Sister Carol to reflect on that with us for a bit. Something a bit different for our reflection today on the Feast of St. Louis, I asked our very own Sister Carol just to give all of us a little background on who uh, St. Louis was, where she came from, why she did what she did, and what is it that she did. And then to end just by offering, what is one thing that touches her life, Sister Carol's life today, 
about St. Louise that brings joy and challenge. So I thank her for saying yes to that, and Sister Carol, I invite you up. Happy Feast of St. Louise de Marriac. Currently, the virtues that continue to touch me, that I admire most in Louise, are her patience and her tenacity. Let me explain. First, some background. This year, we celebrate the 400th anniversary of Louise's Lumiere, her light of Pentecost. She struggled exceedingly for many years about her life choices. Initially, she felt called to the cloister. However, she was refused entry due to her health. So in 1613, her family convinced her to marry. Her husband was chronically ill, and ten years later, seriously so. Louise lovingly cared for him, yet always wondered if being a wife was her true vocation. She suffered for years with this internal doubt and prayed for resolution, which she finally received during an inner experience of divine communication with God. In 1623, at the age of 32, she wrote, On the Feast of Pentecost, during Holy Mass or while I was praying in the church, my mind was completely freed of all doubt. I was advised that I should remain with my husband and that the time would come when I would be in a position to make vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience, and that I would be in a small community where others would do the same. I understood that I would be where I could help my neighbor, but I did not understand how, since there was to be much coming and going. This experience gave her peace yet wonderment. However, even after meeting St. Vincent de Paul two years later, she was stymied as he delayed and delayed and delayed her request to gather girls to form what became the Daughters of Charity. This finally happened only in 1633, ten years after her light of Pentecost. Patience is not one of my virtues. Waiting for something to happen seems so inefficient to me, which points to a couple of my ingrained tendencies. That is, executing everything as quickly and as perfectly as possible. To this end, I regularly correct efforts multiple times, yet complete tasks ahead of the deadline. I am deeply touched and can easily identify with Louise's struggle at Vincent's Let's Wait, and I greatly admire her persistence and continued push to accomplish what the Spirit had revealed to her on Pentecost years earlier. On this Louise's feast, the date of her beatification in 1920, I sincerely pray, through her intercession, that I and all of you listening who need more patience and tenacity will be showered by God with these attributes modeled so well by Louise de Marriac. God's blessing on all of us. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Gracious God, source and goal of all love, may we follow the example of St. Louis, those virtues of tenacity and patience, so that by practicing your love on earth, we may obtain the kingdom promised to believers. We ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A quick thank you to all of you who filled out the recent survey we sent. Really, really helpful information as we kind of look forward and plan. So thank you for the time in doing that. And uh, and Sister Carol, of course, thank you. Thank you not only for your reflection, but for 57 years and all of the many people you've touched in your life. My gosh. Praise be to God. (laughs) And praise be to all of you for joining us today. May God's blessing wrap you and hold you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow.